Well, home prices across Canada are expected to climb next year with the anticipation of Bank of Canada rate cuts in the new year as well and the possibility that that could reinvigorate the housing market. This is according to a report from Royal LePage uh, as an outlook for 2024. For perspective, let's bring in Phil Soper, president and CEO of Royal LePage. Phil, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, good to be here. So uh, before we look ahead to 2024, just to look back a little bit at, at 2023, was there anything that really surprised you uh, about this year? Because when you look back, um, I think the expectation was that prices would be sort of stabilizing in the second half of the year. But stuff happened before that. And then, you know, it just, yeah. How, how did it play out? Well, on you? home prices, uh, the year actually ended above our forecast from this year. Right. So that's positive. But it didn't happen in the way we expected. Mm -hmm. uh, it started slow. And then there was that that uh, run on housing, a spurt in home values in the spring when yeah. the bank paused uh, interest, central bank paused interest rates. And then uh, homes started to give back value again in the third and fourth quarter. Not much, one to 2% per quarter. Uh, ending the year, kind of where we expected, but not the path we expected. Yeah. The other thing that was uh, much off our outlook was the volume of homes tr trading hands uh, mm. down about a third from uh, from normal uh, so it was a very slow year uh, people just backed off but they didn't sell their houses in a fire sale they they sort of stayed pat and I think that is a reflection of the high employment levels low foreclosure levels people were able to say I'll just wait yeah, when the Bank of Canada stepped back in with those two additional interest rate increases, oh, that really seemed things, to freeze yeah. everything. Yeah. Okay, so how, how do you see uh, 2024 playing out, especially um, with the commentary that we just got from the Federal Reserve and this sort of shift uh, and the possibility that there could be a few interest rate cuts in the new year? I mean, oh. I guess that was always sort of out there, but now it's really in your face. Yeah. I I don't hear that kind of language from the Bank of Canada, and I yeah. wouldn't expect the, the sort of accommodative policy from the Bank of Canada that we're hearing uh, from the Federal Reserve. That said, I think even a, a small interest rate decrease uh, will unleash something of a, a, a torrent of pent-up demand. Mm. Uh, Unlike the United States, the savings rate here has not dropped. So savings have climbed, consumer-based savings have climbed while it peaked and fell in the United States. And our, uh, on a per capita basis, we bring in many more people. Our immigration uh, policy is uh, smoother. And so we've got household formation, both organic and immigration-based, building building uh, that demand for houses. People are sitting on money, employment's strong. They just need a sign. I've, I've called it the, the, the great uh, accommodation or the great adjustment, adjustment yeah. to, to, our, to, to this new medium single digit uh, mortgage rate environment as opposed to you know, waiting until they can get a 2% mortgage again, which of course, they're not going to see anytime soon. Well, yeah, I mean, that 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 is a it brings up a, a good point of whether, uh, you know, when you're looking at your forecast and you're doing these big picture um, takes, do you think that interest rates are going to be sort of leveling off at, at a higher level than we we saw even pre pandemic? Absolutely. I'd, I'd say uh, the actual price people are paying, so not the posted rates, because people tend to pay a little, right. little less. There's competition among lenders, um, and, and, and of course, the Bank of Canada rate impacts variable rate mortgages versus fixed rate mortgages. And in normal markets, it's the three to five year fixed mortgage that are the most popular products in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I believe they'll be available in the four to five percent range at the end of the year, which is call it double what they could have been available. You know, you could have got it during the pandemic, but it's low, low normal for if you look at the last 30 years. And uh, I believe people will adjust to that just fine. The big challenge will be dealing with that peak in home prices that we really haven't gotten off of that occurred during the pandemic. So I think we'll still see interprovincial migration. We'll still see more people moving to uh, 
secondary cities to find housing. I've said that, that it used to be employment that drove people to relocate across the country. I think it's now house prices. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, in this era of yeah. uh, virtual work, um, people are, are able to be more flexible with uh, how they earn a living and where they live. When you're when you're thinking about the gain for the year now, forgive me, was it six percent or three? Five and a half, Five and a half. in okay. aggregate. If you take okay. condominiums, townhouses, okay. uh, detached homes. Yeah. Um, but is that? I mean, I, that's sort of you know averaging it out. But are there some areas where you know if you're thinking of people moving outside of Toronto to try to find more affordable housing, yeah. could that mean lower demand in in the big centers where prices are higher? Would you expect that prices would you know either increase that much or maybe even decrease sure. or what do you think our our biggest cities the gta really is uh, outsized in in terms of its impact on the national housing market yeah the move to other regions of ontario number one and to place like alberta and atlantic canada number two will act as a little bit of a uh, of a relief valve. It'll take some of the, the pressure off uh, an area where most new Canadians settle and where we have the, hi the highest number of organic um, households being formed, young people going out on their own. So it'll, it'll keep uh, prices from boiling over, but it won't be enough. Uh, we're still dealing with, uh, it, it's kind of masked right now with the lower demand, mm -hmm. uh, lower demand, but we're still dealing with uh, big house or, or housing shortages in this country, particularly in our biggest cities. So yeah, there'll be some spreading out um, and there'll be some winners and losers. Calgary, we think will outpace the rest of the country, 8%. And Vancouver is sort of the other end, our most expensive city at 3%, but everywhere we see a lift. Mm. And when you think about that spring market, um, listings, do you think it's just going to be, because you talked about a, a jump in demand, but could it be uh, a, real, a real flood from the, the seller side of things well, at that it, point, do you think? It's interesting. I, there's a virtuous cycle when a market's working well. First time buyers are, are almost always the largest cohort, not in value, but in terms of the number of transactions. And they just have been very quiet. They don't want to get into the market today when they think a home might be cheaper tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier if you're selling a home today and buying in the same market because they even themselves out. You get a lower price for the home you're selling, but you're buying at lower price, right? right. So first time home buyers have been very quiet. They will come back into the market at the first sign that they can. I believe that'll start in the mid-February to March timeframe, which will allow those uh, entry-level homeowners who've been trying to get, say, from a condo into a, a townhouse because they've had a child or something, or newly married people, allow them to move up, and the move-uppers into entry-level luxury, and the cycle continues. It's been broken in 2023. So yeah, yeah. it's those first-timers that really need to get back into the market to make it function in a healthy manner. 